P-gain within the auto level settings is basically how sensitive the craft is to auto level. Now if you have your P-gains very high, it's going to make a very snappy craft where if you let go of the sticks in a bank, it will very quickly respond and come to level. Now that all sounds good in theory, but what happens is you can put that too high and create high speed oscillations where the craft will go level, it'll slightly overshoot, and then it will overshoot the opposite direction constantly trying to compensate. So you'll end up with this thing that's always trying to stay level, but it'll be going back and forth and back and forth just to stay there. So you don't want to do that. Now you also don't want it too low to the point that auto level is a little sloppy. I actually like it in fairly low settings, maybe 30, 40, 50 sometimes. But um, if it's too low, you basically end up with a craft that won't level itself very quickly. So you have to dial that in. Okay, now we're done with P gain, let's hop on into P limit. Basically what P limit does is it controls how much input you can give the board. So you could be bashing the sticks side to side, but if you have a very, very low P limit, the craft will still be moving fairly smoothly and it's not going to be really jerky or have a, a heavy lean angle to it. Now with the P limit very, very high, you generally have to be a slightly better pilot. It's for more aggressive flying that you need to make quick changes. So low P limit can actually reduce the amount of maneuverability the craft has, whereas a high P limit will give you a lot of maneuverability while still being in auto level. Okay, last but not least is accelerometer trimming. Now, this feature is actually very simple and important for some and not so much for others, and it depends on how you've mounted your board and if your craft is perfectly true. If you take off an auto level and notice there's always a drift to one direction, you need to be careful not to do this in wind because you'll be compensating for that. But if it's always drifting to one direction, you can put a positive or negative value into these features to compensate that drift out. So basically, with your roll axis in the accelerometer trim, a positive value means a right-hand compensation. Now your pitch axis, a positive value means a rearwards compensation. So if you're drifting to the left, you'd put a positive value in to compensate to the right. If you're drifting forward, you'd put a positive value in to compensate rearwards. And there you have it. Now you know everything you need to know about the KK2 and auto leveling. So if you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like it. If you want to contact me, you can actually go to my website, which is rcmanchild.com. And um, you can see some of my products there. There's a little contact button at the bottom if you want to shoot me a personal email. Um, I'm doing a lot of uh, electronics development for the multi-rotor industry right now. So I've got some custom motors, custom speed controls, hopefully brushless gimbals coming out soon. So um, stay in touch there. And uh, you can check out my Facebook page as well. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care.